Yes. Uh, hello, this is Cal Cat the Cal Catster, and I just got back from a double feature of of crappy movies, and <laughs> so I went to see. Uh, well, first, I went to see Death Wish. Yeah, Bruce Willis Death Wish remake. Um. Yeah. Um. So. That. Uh, whatever. Uh, uh, it's not like the original Death Wish movies were art or masterpieces. They weren't. Uh, so the new one, well, isn't either. Uh, it's 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 loud and bombastic in the beginning, and it has Bruce Willis uh, somehow his left handedness enters in there. Uh, 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 he's he's married in the movie, and he's got a wife and daughter. Like, like in kind, there was a book called Death Wish. The movie's based on so. It's loosely copying the book, like the other movies did. Charles Bronson before him. Uh, it's yeah, they they it's, it's kind of a mess. Uh, it's it's it starts off with, of course, the the you know he's 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 a doctor in this one for some reason. It's a surgeon, and these these bad guys somehow learn about where they live. Using the cell phone tracker somehow, and the bad guys uh, uh, rob and and shoot the wife and uh, put the daughter in a coma and then leave. Then our hero becomes a vigilante, uh, but but hurts his hand with the, the Glock thing and can still fire a gun later on. Uh, the way a gun goes, some of those guns have a pullback thing with a. The, yeah, the, the back of the, the gun comes back and hits your thumb if you do it wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's time to, it's trying really hard to be die hard. I think that's probably the problem with it. You got Bruce Willis. Um, uh, in the original, it kind of made more sense. Uh, not that it makes sense for a vigilante. Uh, they were doing the Chicago is, is full of crime thing again. Like, uh, yeah, they've done that. Uh, they have picked on Detroit in, in the past, and now they're picking on Chicago. Uh, yeah, so there's this this weird sort of yeah. He's a vigilante, and he rescues, stops a carjacking, and then he learns about one of the bad guys surreptitiously through someone that's brought in that had a gunshot wound, and he's able to find out where the bad guy's bar is and go in there and kill him, and then. And then he gets the other bad guy's information from somewhere else. He he leaves evidence at the crime scene so that the cops find the evidence. The cops won't help. They spend a lot of time with the cops won't help him, but then they do. Uh, I don't know how an actual procedural thing would work. It's not a cop or nothing. But but it's like in in the movies, the cops are either overworked or or supermen. <laughs> it's never somewhere in between. Uh, and uh, and in this one they were overworked, so so he becomes the vigilante. He becomes the Grim Reaper. He goes around. They call him the Grim Reaper. I don't know how the bad guys would ever get their address from scanning their cell phone. How did they do that? And and how did the other bad guy at the end know that? And and then he was worried about them tracing it with GPS, so he like cracked the phones. But really. They wouldn't because they'd have to know where the phone was to begin with in order to like if I have a cell phone and I turn the GPS on then it tracks me but if it isn't turned on they're not going to be able to find out where it is uh, it doesn't work that way uh, but in Hollywood it does uh, so there was a lot of um, uh, it just was kind of a mess uh, I knew it was going to be a mess going in it's not getting very good reviews and yeah, it is a mess. So, so yeah, this is an unusual Wednesday review. Uh, and uh, yeah, because I was compiling the uh, the Calcat Show nine and ten on a copy disc, so we have a copy disc of it, uh, and can't lose it that way. Uh, but, yeah, so the the review show and all that. Um, yeah. Uh, but so I went on to watch this movie, Death Wish, which is. It's not very good. Uh, it's, I guess it's worth a rental. I mean, if you like vigilante movies, it's 
throwback to the 80s. I think it could have had a little more of that. That They spend a little too much time with character development in, a, in the beginning of the movie. Well over half an hour. They don't need it. They, they, like the original, it should just open with them establishing the, the, the robbery. The, the other stuff is all that stuff about the girl going to college and the wife and all that and establishing these characters that we have Elizabeth Shue and some new new person uh, are not interesting enough that your attention is warranted. They're just not. And when they're dead, you're like, oh, okay, or what, or wounded. When was that going to come? You know, it just it just didn't. Yeah, they had no chemistry. It just didn't resonate. It's like even when they said, oh yeah, oh, Bruce Willis says baby a few times, you weren't convinced for a minute that he was even with her the mother or the daughter. <laughs> He's Bruce Willis uh, with, with, uh, with his hair sh head shaved. Uh, I, I wonder if someone else would have done a better job. Maybe the villain dude from Sparrow or something. <laughs> you know, I wonder if somebody would have done, you know. Uh, well, I would say Kevin Spacey, but he's in a lot of trouble. So it wouldn't be him. Affleck wouldn't work either. No, it has to be... Bruce Willis was just wrong casting, I think. Uh, I wouldn't have used him. Uh, yeah, um, but, you know, what, I'm not a director. Bruce Willis movies. Uh, it played like a version of Cop Out, but with the Death Wish guy. And the, and the kills are nice, but, you know, for, for Hollywood kills, but including a car jack thing. From the trailer, the jack comes down. Uh, that was gross. Uh, when it went, you know. But, uh, yeah, your typical vigilante movie fair, it's not, it's not great, it's not, yeah, I just, I, I just underwhelmed. It, it was, the message was muddled with added high-tech stuff and cell phone stuff and thrown in and, and news media going on about it and uh, a famous Sirius X1 radio host who gets to be in it, I'm sure they paid him a lot of money, uh, <laughs> But, but yeah, it's like, it's like, it's, uh, yeah, um, it was just there. It was just blah. It was kind of like, eh, eh, death wish. Okay. Uh, I think the main problem with vigilante movies is they inevitably have to end, and you inevitably have to have the character who is the vigilante stop. Whereas the death wish movies, the earlier, in the 80s, just went off on a tangent. As well as the Dirty Harry movies, the same idea. Maybe it was trying to be Dirty Harry. Maybe as a Dirty Harry movie, this would have worked better. Just make him a cop and say he's Dirty Harry. He's gone off the, the deep end. He's going to go rogue. Uh, uh, but not as Death Wish. I think they just got the wrong guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was... It was... Uh, meh. Underwhelming. Uh, the double feature. Okay, I'm going to pause here for the next one. Uh, yes, this is Cal Cat the Cal Catster, and this is a continuation of my double feature. Where I spent the whole day going to movies. Um, uh, uh, the second movie I saw was Red Sparrow, the semi-controversial uh, Jennifer Lawrence movie with uh, with a bad guy dude from uh, from one of the Insidious movies or something. He's been in something else, and he was in uh, I think one of the Taken movies and something else. It wasn't Liam Neeson. No, it's a bad guy. Uh, I think he was also might have been in uh, in one of the Fast and the Furious movies as a villain. Uh, yeah, so there's like like uh, this was the more interesting of the two films. It was actually the more entertaining of the two films, uh, notwithstanding because of all of the fan buzz, uh, the internet buzz. Oh my gosh, Jennifer Lawrence goes naked at least twice in the movie, and she's naked, and you get to see her 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 hoo hoo diddly and everything. And uh, yeah, you do. Um, but, but, but when you do, it's not at all in the slightest bit arousing for any moment. It's sort of like back in the day when they had this, like, dreary teen, like, like, docudrama movie that they build as a comedy called The Last American Virgin. It was supposed to be an ironic, dark comedy, but it wasn't funny. Uh, movie, in which they showed a girl naked, and they said, ooh, we showed a girl completely naked, you get to see everything, all the bits. 
and but she's crying because she's in the hospital room and she's gonna have an abortion. It's that kind of stuff. It's like that doesn't happen in this movie, but there's something like that going on here. Um, in this movie, uh, there's. It's like no, you, you're not at all. I mean, people are probably doing like screen captures all over the internet, you know, catch those those scenes from there and fire to show them. Uh, but yeah, Jennifer Lawrence really never did it for me to begin with. I mean, I saw the Hunger Games movies and stuff, and I liked that she looks like a normal person and not like a Hollywood super beauty. But but yeah, it's like it's, it's just all right. I mean, she's just got got a few Oscars now and and. Uh, is now pretentious and was briefly dating Darren Aronofsky during Mother. I didn't see that movie, incidentally. Uh, this movie has her as a Russian ballerina who is injured and then and then goes on a mission via her evil uncle, a la sort of a Shakespearean twist, a sort of Hamlet crossed with what to do about nothing, uh, and a little bit of Lady Macbeth. And she goes out into this and there's Russian music playing in the first part. It's, it's all very very. Uh, Trying to be Romanoff, uh, Romanesque, uh, trying to be Tolsky and Dostoevsky and all these other things thrown in, uh, all these G Russian things, and it's like, uh, okay, the the music is fine, but is the movie fine? Oh uh, yeah, the music is dre properly dreary. Uh, they kind of throw that away about forty five minutes into it, send her off to like this weird boarding school where where they train women to be to be super spies slash like call girls, like expensive ones. Uh, yeah, the the plot of the story, the sparrows. They made it up for the movie. It, if there's anything really, really like that that it's loosely based on, I I doubt seriously they'd be very effective. Um, <laughs> just you know. Um, but but okay, let's 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 buy them that. Uh, I'm sure there are going to be fan comments for that. No, that totally really exists. It isn't just a Hollywood thing they made up for the movies. Like, no, it's a thing they made up for the. Uh, she's basically James Bond, but a chick. Okay, she's basically, she's basically Atomic Blonde, but uh, but but not as cool somehow. Uh, Atomic Blonde is a better movie. Uh, yes, the embarrassing thing is that most of the actors in it are all Americans, from from here, you know, Americans, and uh, and they they really really cannot pull off a Russian accent. I was like chuckling like. Unfortunately, there's really dozen people, dozen or so people in the audience. Uh, but I was up in the very, very front, behind the wall, and I was like, "Oh my gosh! <laughs> None of these people can do it. They cannot do Russian accent. How hard is it to do Russian accent? It's not that hard. Anyway, um, but apparently, if you're Jennifer Lawrence, it's very difficult." <laughs> um, but yes, um. Ugh. Oh no. The, the acrylic letters are just not there. It's just a mess. Um. Yeah. Uh, yes, and no. Uh, yes, I sound like Boris Betinov from Bullwinkle and Rocky. Because, yes, I sound like Midwestern Russian. Hmm. It's weird. Anyway, um. <laughs> so. The uncle guy is clearly evil, but uh, it sends her on a mission before she goes to the school. Sends her on a mission uh, where this bad guy, uh, she's supposed to make a contact with the bad guy. The bad guy wants to basically rape her. So we get to see some some skin. But unfortunately, it's a rape scene. And these other bad guys sneak in and they strangle him and then slit his throat while he's on top of her. Yeah, that, that's charming. Um, uh, yeah, um, no, ew. And yes, that that's not very arousing. So unless you're into into uh, the bad guy getting getting you know choked off and killed on top of you. Uh, unfortunately, the bad guys that killed the other bad guy, they were working for the the Russian secret service or something, and they're like, "Oops, well we screwed up." So she was a witness, but we're not going to kill her because she's the niece of this guy. So. He sends her to Sparrow School, to the Russian call girl school. Was this this really insane teacher lady who actually pulls off a fairly decent Russian accent and isn't really trying so hard. She just sort of does Eastern European sort of like I'm going to be the Eva school mom. You know, yes. Ah. 
and and yeah, she pulls it off actually. Uh, maybe I think in the credits she actually is a rich, so that's why Mr. Europe she pulled it off. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, she did some kind of a Slavic sort of Ukrainian accent, but yeah, it worked anyway. Um, but yes, uh, uh, yeah, so this evil school place, apparently they, they trick your minds and stuff and train the girls and the men and stuff and they have parts where they have to take their clothes off and there's one scene where they have to do a, a, na a naked scene. Uh, this one guy takes off all his clothes and we get to see his junk. Uh, d uh, he's not very big. And then, and then, and then he later, uh, but except that later on he attempts to... Uh, or maybe it's another guy. This other guy attempts to rape her in the bathroom and she smacks him. There's also this odd scene earlier where where the uncle guy sort of frames the other dancer lady and she goes and, and beats the shit out of them with a golf club, makes it look like an accident. So she's kind of a bitch before she goes to the school, finishing school or whatever. Um, but yeah, so she's not likable. Uh, she's clearly a villain, but she's being instructed to be like a heroic character. She doesn't actually betray them. She double crosses them. She's a not a double spy. She's a triple spy. She's back. So yeah, spoilers. Uh, but yeah, so it's not like it really is like Atomic Blonde. It's not like uh, some of those other ones. It's it's ripping off Atomic Blonde. Uh, that one was a better movie. That's a better movie. Uh, yeah, um, there's a naked scene in that too. But Charlie Theron's uh, in that one. In that one naked scene again, it's dreary. And she's getting in the tub because she's been all beaten up in the space battle, in the space battle, in the battle with the, uh, with the bad guys. So, yeah, that's like, okay, that's not hot either. Um, so Jennifer Lawrence's character then tricks rapist guy Well, at the school. Uh, the teacher pulls out the rapist guy and tells him, okay, you need to have, you need to, uh, like, you guys need to have sex. She's like, where the heck would that ever happen? So rapist guy comes out with a broken nose and everything. He's like, well, okay, I'll, I'll have sex with her. But apparently, of course, he's completely put off. He, he doesn't want to because you know, she hit him in the nose earlier. Um, <laughs> so, so with a door, piece of a door uh, because he's an asshole. So basically, uh, he doesn't want to do it. Even though she's totally naked, that's where we see her bits. That's where we see her... Her tit and her vagina. Uh, however, that scene is creepy. It's it's all fuck and it's like all, all manipulative and shit. It's not it's not at all. Yeah, it's empowering, but it's not at all arousing. It's empowering for her, uh, but yeah, uh, no, uh, yeah, you don't want to do this chick for any reason. <laughs> you really don't. She's scary. Um, yeah, so that respect, it was a good movie if you like villains, I guess. She played a decent villain, but there aren't any heroes, really. Then there's a CIA agent from the U.S. who looks like Mark Wahlberg, but I don't think was. Another another person from, I'm not going to look them all up, who cares. Um, the better of the two movies. The, the, the fake Russian accents get a little better as time goes on. And then it wears on, like, okay, okay, let them just do their thing if they're gonna say it wrong it's fine they'll say it wrong uh it got pedantic after a while how, how they kept screwing up the acrylic uh russian language uh, and then i just yeah all right all right, all right. uh so is there actually a good spy movie here i would say if you then she's got like a sick mother and stuff and it's all over the place i think this movie would benefit from taking out the first half an hour and making it 90 minutes long <laughs> Yeah, if it was, and there's these weird scene transitions that happen in it, like to do the double cross thing, but they don't set it up right. So the double cross and then the triple cross at the end, where she uh, telegraphs what she's gonna do and then does it, uh, that also is like, wait a minute, how? How did she? Do? This is as confusing as when, as when David and the other robot in 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 Prometheus two uh, switch places. And how did that happen? What? Uh, was that when he took the neck thing? Uh, yeah, they, they, she frames the uncle. Uh, spoilers. Um, but yeah, it's like... Oh well, yeah, she she fucks the uh, CIA guy. But she's clearly manipulating him. He's like, why would you even do her? And what's funny is the sex scene was ridiculous. So the one scene where, where you get to see her actually grinding away 
It is ridiculous. She comes out and she's like in a, in a nutty thing and you see the bits. And uh, he's sitting there on the couch. He's clearly limp, you know. And he's in his, he's in his drawers. <laughs> and she jumps on top of him and she's like, yes, I will give you some. Ah. And he's like, okay, uh, whatever. But he, she immediately, like, I'm, like, like, this sex scene is like instantaneous. She, she goes, boom, 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 tag, 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 tag. And then gets off. Oh, that was good. It's like, I'm sorry, dudes, but that, he wasn't hard. He could not have been hard. <laughs> he just, <should. laughs> this chick comes out of nowhere in the middle of the night, jumps on your, on your junk, and starts going, you're not going to be hard. You're going to be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> so, so, okay, now that she rubbed him off, now he's hard, but then he, then she was done. <laughs> oh, God. Like that's not how that works. Besides, your pants were on the whole time. Your panties were on the whole time. <laughs> There's no point in which she could have grabbed a hold of his junk and done something. Uh, that scene was ridiculous. Even the audience was like chuckling. I don't think that was the reaction they wanted. This romantic spy scene, but but it was like, <laughs> oh my God, they're not doing it right. <laughs> Ugh, um. But the one scene where they wanted to be hot, it wasn't hot. It was like a James Bond exploitation thing. Again, empowering. Quite empowering for, for her to be dominating him on the couch. But, uh, yeah, th there's no way he was actually hard. Um, <laughs> so, uh, she's going to get Russian syphilis from the three other guys she was just with. Uh, yes, uh, Russian syphilis is very strong, though. It's like metal. Yeah. Um, yes, Russian crabs, the strongest kind of crabs. They keep telling him that that she's too much for him, but uh, he doesn't listen. Yeah, and then ultimately she double crosses the mole, or well, uh, yeah. There's this other guy that's the mole. I won't give all that away, but yeah, she double crosses the other guy, and then goes back to the to the school, and everything's all right. But it's like because the because of the people, the country, the patriots, ah, thing that. They kept saying over and over again in the beginning of the movie, so you knew from the very get-go, okay, okay, if we buy that she's Russian and just has a kind of a retarded accent that doesn't sound Russian, then maybe uh, maybe she is a patriot after all, and she won't she won't turn on them, so you kind of know how the movie's going to end. Yeah, uh, thanks, movie, for telling us like half an hour in where it was going to go. Uh, and then going there with no, there was no twist ending here. You knew what she was going to do. Especially after the main bad guys uh, send a bad guy. After they torture her for information about the bad guy. They torture her afterward. The uncle assists in a torture scene. Seen in the trailers. That's separate from the school. They made it look like the school is where she gets tortured, but it's not. It's like later on. It's like, he's a total dick. He's like, I'm going to torture you now. It's like, Why? Why not just let her catch the spy and bring him to you? Like, what, 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 uh, and, it's, uh, oh yeah, there's another messed up scene. I find it hard to believe that in, the movie takes place currently in modern times. So I find it hard to believe that, like, uh, they would be using floppy disks, 5.3.25 5 uh, floppy disks in modern times. Those disks are from the 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And uh, there would be no way to read them now on a, on a computer. So why didn't they just say the disc was on a thumb drive? Dope! That would have been more interesting, actually, if she just the, here's the thumb drive with the information. Thumb drive. That see that would have worked. You get a thumb drive and put it in the movie. They have like five of them just to you know, make it look interesting. A thumb drive. <laughs> I didn't think of that. But anyway, yeah, so no, they wouldn't be using floppy disks uh, at all. They would be magnetic media disk thing, thumb drives, uh, jump drives. Even the FBI guys, CIA guys, would have had that. Yeah. CIA, not FBI. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, but, but yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're, it's just a mess. Come on. It's just a messy movie. Uh, it's, yeah, Red Sparrow, uh, 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 the horror school, as they say. Um, but yes, uh, I'm just not buying Jennifer Lawrence as a super spy, although she does manage to kick some butt in there. 
Uh, Charlize Theron, yeah, I could, I could, she could probably pull that off. Yeah, <laughs> but not Jennifer Lawrence. Um, yeah, and just because the mother was sick and had rheumatoid or something, uh, she's, she has to become a spy. Like, this doesn't even make any sense. It's like, your movie is, is ridiculous. It's like, the Russians aren't going to be that foolish to, like, grab random people that witness one of their homicides and go like, oh, okay, we'll just make you awesome so you can fight us. It's, it's yet another example of, of the bad guys training their main character to be powerful enough to defeat them. Why would they do that? That's stupid. <laughs> it makes sense in a James Bond movie where James Bond is sort of this underground super spy for MI6, and he's like, hey, everybody's suave and everything, and, and he's licensed to kill. That makes sense, because they're, they've trained James Bond under the auspice that he wouldn't turn on the uh, MI6, hopefully. Uh, they have done that in some of the James Bond movies. They've had, like, rogue agents and stuff, including one, one recent one. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, and the Mission Impossible movies have done that, but those are just a mess. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Including the latest one that's coming out. Yeah. yeah. Another one. Uh, so, yeah, it was... Yeah, Red Sparrow. So, so you can safely say, if, if you want spoilers, go and see it, uh, that all of the nude scenes are under duress, let's say. All of the really... The, the blatant nude scenes are like, just to get naked for some reason, to, to show some sort of empowering thing against a bad guy rapist dude or or another rapist dude or some evil dude or or gets felt up by an evil dude or and every time they do that it's not sexual it's manipulation so it's not arousing and then and then you have the one sex scene that is ridiculous because it takes all of maybe seven seconds and uh, may, maybe eight there's no way that guy's even hard yet. <laughs> like, wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, uh, yeah, so that was the one scene where she was actually, or was she manipulating him? Because later on, the guy tortures the guy. Oh, yeah, there was a really gross skin graft machine torture scene. It's probably a made-up thing, but there was a skin graft bad guy that tortures the guy at the shoulder, and then she goes after the belly because she has to, to make it realistic. Um... <laughs> But it's like, it's like, it was getting grabbed torture. That scene was, it was gross. That, that was nasty. That was squeamishy. So there's, there's some horror scenes in it. It's, it's not so much a thriller as, yeah, I'd say it was a thriller. Yeah, it's a spy thriller. Uh, as a sort of fucked up horror thriller. Um, and often thriller and horror related. Uh, horror is the opposite of, of, of comedy, as I said earlier. Yes, uh, not drama, the opposite of comedy. Horror is the opposite of comedy. Uh, drama and comedy are just two sides of the same coin. See, horror. Fantasy and sci-fi are two sides of the same coin. Uh, horror, however, is something else. Um, yeah, so... Messed up. We'll see Black Red Sparrow, uh, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, don't go see it thinking you're going to see a porno, because you're not going to see a porno. Uh, it's it's dark and twisted, and, and go to see you can see a spy movie. This is what it is, a spy movie. And uh, the technology skips from being high-tech to being really low-tech for some reason. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Uh, the car is driving on the wrong side of the road, but we'll give them that. Uh, jumps to other countries that don't make any sense. Uh, there's some logic gaffes where she's back at the apartment when she was just in this other Eastern European country. And suddenly goes back there, like, in the next, literally the next scene. And it's like, what? And then there's a bad guy that kills the other, the, the other agent and check lady. And it's like, like, there's just some really confusing stuff going on in this movie. And that's it. So there's Red Sparrow. Uh, previews, not too interesting. Um, yeah. Um, the horror movie's coming out. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's terrible. What is that? It's a really, really bad, like, Stranger in the House horror movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, um... 
it's a, a sequel to it's a sequel to that awful Truth or Dare movie. Apparently, they've made a part two. Uh, can't believe the first one made enough money to make a part two, but apparently it did. And it looks like it should go direct to Netflix because it's really bad looking. Like, oh god! Oh, the the Truth or Dare game will kill you. It's like what? This premise is stupid. Like, okay, so it's like The Ring, but with with internet meme games? How? Why? Is it like Ouija? I guess Ouija 2 was actually better than Ouija Part 1. But, but uh, yeah, it was better. But, but Ouija Part 1 was awful. So just up from shit is better than shit. Um, <laughs> it's a different kind of shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not diarrhea coming out. It's sort of more like fully formed shit. <laughs> but you know, in Soviet Russia, we do not have such things, Sparrow. That's a ridiculous. Why would we do such thing? I do not know. Is, is, uh, why would Jennifer Lawrence be in movie? She just does not know how to do a Russian accent. She sounds like she's she studied Rocky and Bolvenko, the American cartoon from the, from the 70s. And, and, and watched a lot of Natasha going, I'm Natasha! And possibly had watched a, 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 a G.I. Joe cartoon and saw the Baroness, who is not Russian, she is from, she is Baroness, she is from uh, Serbia, actually. So that really does not make any sense, okay, it was a Soviet state, but it still doesn't make sense. Serbian <laughs> ideal. <laughs> Find this a true expression in my mere zombie. <laughs>